tax notices under the list of building act section 54 cpo powers under the planning act section 226 section 215 urban amenity notices various statutory powers that deal with the problem of buildings at risk section 77 and 78 notices uh, the ability to recover costs under section Luke's Church, St Andrew's Church, the Royal Insurance Building. Heritage means to the people of Liverpool, a un it's a, our unique selling point. It's one of the uh, things that makes the Liverpool brand stand out worldwide. We have UNESCO World Heritage Site status based on the fact that we've got historic buildings within the city, so it's a, an important asset for us. Liverpool has over two and a half thousand buildings protected by listed status. But by 1991, this building stock was in serious decline. Pockets of neglect were everywhere. The Rope Walks, Stanley Dock and Dale Street. The council put together their first ever local buildings at risk register and the problem was worse than they thought. Well, the survey that was undertaken 25 years ago revealed that if we didn't act and uh, act sort of immediately, that we were in danger of losing a lot of our historic stock. And so, you know, it was important that we took action to actually protect that stock, bring it back into use, be innovative in what we did. Uh, but, but the most important thing was actually to preserve it. A citywide Buildings at Risk project was set up in 2001 in response to Liverpool Echo's Stop the Rot campaign, pulling together both external agencies and the council's own departments and resources. My role has been to manage a citywide strategy which essentially does four things. Firstly, is to quantify the problem, so to work out how many buildings at risk there are. Secondly, to identify the priorities. Thirdly, is to engage with building owners. And finally, if necessary, to coordinate enforcement action and help to deliver a solution. Once identified, buildings across the city were targeted for the appropriate statutory action. And slowly, 500 buildings have been brought back into use. Three hundred of these have been removed from the Buildings at Risk Register and the project has been a major success. They're not lying empty anymore, they're making a contribution usually in business rates to the city and, and they've filled up space and attracted people to them. Key things which have made the project a success are a, firstly a willingness to, uh, to dialogue with building owners and to maintain that dialogue uh, in a persistent and persevering fashion. Secondly, if dialogue should fail and negotiations don't work, the council has had a willingness to um, follow up uh, the threat of enforcement action with actually undertaking uh, urgent works in default and uh, on occasion using its powers to recover the costs. And it's about getting that balance, it's about having a balance of protecting our heritage, our cultural heritage of buildings, and also, you know, looking forward to the future as well and building uh, modern buildings that can complement what we've got. I think you get that balance right, that's what means you have a successful city. Currently, only 3% of Liverpool's buildings remain on the Buildings at Risk Register. And, with additional focus on vulnerable buildings, the city has begun to stop buildings entering the list in the first place. Between 2001 and 2008, the project stimulated £4.5 million worth of private investment, surprisingly outstripping public funding 5 to 1. With job creation and model partnerships between agencies, the regeneration of Liverpool is seen as a flagship of what can be done with historic districts. This is all epitomised in the regeneration of Dale Street and the Royal Insurance Building in the heart of the city. It is the earliest example of a load-bearing steel frame building in the UK. Uh, there are other examples, but nothing on this scale from its construction days of 1896. 
the company provided insurance for the Titanic and the insurance policy was signed in this building, in this very room. The Royal Insurance Building is Grade 2 star listed, designed by James F. Doyle in a neo-baroque style. It had been derelict for nearly 30 years when in 2007 an urgent works notice was served on the owner and later in 2012 the council bought it to implement a hotel conversion on an invest to earn basis. Before the building was, was rescued and action taken to secure its future, I would describe the building's condition as extremely poor. Uh, there was an awful lot of water ingress because of uh, failures, failures in the roof, um, lead theft, which had led to um, corrosion of the steel frame and, and extensive dry rot. Uh, the building had all, also suffered greatly from vandalism, uh, so a numerous fireplaces had been stolen. Uh, timber panelling, uh, the staircase had been um, somewhat obliterated by the loss of marble cladding, so it was in, in a, a, a very uh, dilapidated state at the, the point at which the hotel scheme uh, was initiated. The roof was repaired with help from an Historic England grant of £300,000, and with the developer Ashall Property Limited, it's been transformed into a stunning four-star hotel, a cornerstone for tourism and business in the city. The Royal Insurance Building is a great example of why it's important to spend uh, money and to work in partnership with the likes of the private sector because it's also it's brought in a building that was left dormant for 30 years. It's actually brought it back into, into use. It's created around about 90 jobs. Um, and, you know, it's in the heart of the uh, business quarter. It's a fantastic building, and uh, people go to stay in that building just because of what it is and its history. The support of Historic England to the Buildings at Risk programme has been crucial uh, right from the beginning. It's uh, tough. Uh, in, in the city uh, with regards to funding, so those partnerships are crucial. Historic England co-funded the dedicated Buildings at Risk Officer post from 2001 to 2008, so uh, financial support has been very much uh, a part of their involvement. As well as opportunities for funding, Historic England offers expert technical repair advice, planning advice and guidance on legal processes. Our goal is to build strategic partnerships that are both strong and long-lasting, working with local authorities to secure a future for our history. The, the advice I would give to any city about delivering an enforcement strategy is to make sure that you have uh, a vision of how you want your city to look. And I think it's a strategy that we've uh, used here in the city and I think you know we've been praised for that because rightly you know we've uh, now reduced uh, the buildings at risk and, and uh, uh, we're proud of that. As you've seen, tackling heritage at risk is vitally important, and if done well, can have a hugely beneficial outcome, not just for the historic environment, but for social and economic reasons too. Historic England is committed to supporting this action through our local heritage at risk teams and with our national expertise and experience. In some cases, grant support may be available in addition to this technical advice, and whatever the case, Full details of all the powers and how to use them is available now in our updated Stopping the Rot publication. I hope you find this useful in tackling your own challenging cases and please let us know if we can assist you further. <laughs>